Hi, I'm Jody Vance, and this is Bar Smart. What is Bar Smart, you ask? Well, it's an attitude, a new style of service, and if it's done right, it's a license to print money. How do I know? Well, I've spent a ton of money and time being entertained by the man who pioneered this program. Of course, I'm speaking of Scott Young. I remember the first time I saw Scott wow the crowd at the Roxy. As a matter of fact, I think I was one of that crowd, and I knew right then and there that I'd be back. Scott and his instructors travel internationally, speaking at trade shows, putting on seminars, and judging worldwide competitions. Since 1994, Scott has taken the business of great service to a new level, and the fun has only just begun. You may know him as the creator of Extreme Bartending, the video training series that shows you exactly how to put this winning formula to work for you and your staff. But Bar Smart has always been about much more than just flipping bottles. It's about taking care of the customer, having them come back soon, stay longer, and walk away talking about what a great experience they had. Now, if you ask Scott what his company is all about, he'll tell you it's about spreading ideas, getting people thinking about how they can do their job better. The Flair Bartenders Association gave Scott an award for having the most impact internationally as a trainer. Now, I can go on and on about this young man, but I'd rather let you watch this video and decide for yourself. All I know is in the last 10 years, I've watched as his bar had a lineup while other wells in the club stand empty. Proof's in the pouring, and this is Scott Young. Hi, I'm Scott Young. What you're about to see is a little bit different than any other training video you may have seen. I don't know if you've ever seen a seminar or been to a presentation, but I've often found that the instructor is very knowledgeable on the subject, but they stand up and they talk to you or at you for an hour. Maybe they read out of a book and never bother to ask you what you think. Well, I never liked that, and we don't do it that way. We want this to be intimate and interactive. There are very few right or wrong, black or white things in this industry, and we'll discuss them. But for the most part, they are shades of gray. Now, this is a big world out there. This service industry is everywhere, and I can't just tell you what's going to work in your area, but we can give you some new ideas and hopefully get you thinking about what will. Whether you're watching this video alone or with a group, it's not really designed to be watched in one sitting. It's not a movie. So stop it once in a while, rewind it, make sure you catch all the ideas. Our goal is to stimulate thoughts and discussions, agreements and disagreements, creativity and solutions, ideas, that's what we're all about. You picked a great industry to be involved in, we want to excite you about it. There's all sorts of opportunities out there for the right kind of person, the kind of person who's going to care enough about what they do to think about how to do it better, and then actually go out and do something about it. Hi, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to be discussing Introduction to Extreme Bartending. What is it? Um, why do we do it? Why does it work? Um, first of all, what kinds of names have you heard of Extreme Bartending? Any ideas? What have you heard it described as? Flair. Flair, yeah, very, very important, very popular. Performance. Performance yeah. bartending, yeah. Cocktail. What else? Cocktail? Olympic. Cocktail, yeah, we'll definitely get to the movie Cocktail. Ooh. Olympic. Show. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Show. Show. Show bartending, um, for you know, uh, freestyle, all these things. So basically, they all really mean the same thing, right? Being a performer, you know, having a little bit of entertainment behind the bar, you know, having some style. Um, the name extreme. Uh, we basically we just wanted to take performance to the extreme, take service to the extreme, take uh, you know the entertainment to the extreme, you know, extreme sales, extreme fun, all these things. And and we just thought it was a cool name, so that's kind of where extreme came from. <laughs> All right. Now, how many people have had experience with extreme bartending? A few people. Okay. Excellent. All right. Now, what I really want to do today is talk about the facts, right? People who are going to be watching this are going to be talking about, about you know, why they want to, why they want to do it, um, try to convince their bar managers and owners that this is a good, viable business tool, all right? Um, but let's talk about the negatives first. A lot of people have some, you know, some skepticism about, about this style of bartending, right? Um, Let's talk about cocktail for a second. Who's seen cocktail? Okay, everybody, right? Movie, right? Cocktail, Tom Cruise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, you know, it was made in 1988. Uh, Tom Cruise and Brian Brown uh, um, filmed it. It was uh, lots of fun. What do you guys remember from cocktail? Let's spillage. Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> spillage? Messy. Yeah, messy. Who was uh, getting a drink? <laughs> yeah. Thousands of people around the world. Who's getting The bar was too clean. The bar was too clean. Okay. 
Red, red eyes? I remember the, the drink? Okay, let's focus on the main things, like the spillage, right? I don't know if you guys remember, but I remember tales of alcohol. Just, it's like, oh, you're killing me. They were, they were. I actually asked him about this a little bit later. I have a story on that. But you saw a lot of spillage, right? And, you know, how do we feel about that? Bad. We don't, we don't like it. Right. Um, this is basically there's, uh, you know, there's, there's two main myths that we're, uh, that we're fighting up against when people think about this style of bartending. And that's, that's a really big one. Uh, well, you have to spill, you know, to do this kind of bartending. Well, do you? No. Absolutely not. You really don't. Um, and we'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, it was a lot of spillage, and it, it scared a lot of people away. Uh, I remember, especially for the first few years afterwards, you know, talking to anybody, especially bar manager, about, well, I want to do this kind of bartending. And you know, they go, forget it, not in my bar. That's, you know, that's a gimmick. That's a, you know, that's just a movie thing. Well, you know, it, it's not the way it is. But that's the way a lot of people perceive it to be, all right? Um, what else you guys mentioned? What was the other main thing in cocktail? And what was our main challenge about the style of bartending? Nobody was getting Nobody a drink. Getting drinks. Drinks. Nobody's getting a drink. Yeah, uh, obviously for the movie, they wanted to, to portray the show. Wonderful. Hey, it's entertainment. Great. Lots of fun. Everybody's screaming crazy. Excellent. Um, but what is, what is the purpose of our job as bartenders? Selling Sell booze. <laughs> See, that's what I think. Is what? Get people drunk. <laughs> You're not helping. Uh, Dougie, the devil. <laughs> right, it's to serve alcohol, right? It's to sell drinks, to take care of our customers. Now, entertainment is great, you know, and this style of bartending is you know, extremely fun you know, for the bartender and for the patrons if it's done properly, you know, but not at the expense of your business. Uh, and I see a lot of people out there doing it I think for the wrong reasons. And hopefully, uh, you know, after today, you're going to understand the right reasons, so then maybe you'll be able to go about and take some proper steps. And maybe next time you present it to somebody, a bar manager, an owner, uh, or even the next customer you talk to that is really skeptical about it, you can explain to them that, you know, there's, there's real reasons, there's real thinking behind what you're doing. Uh, you're not just back there to show off and, and you know, get gross. You know. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. What do you do at work? Fair, fair enough. What do I do it for? <laughs> uh, <Yeah. laughs> Let's get this straight right now. I'm a bartender. I'm not a priest. You know, my name's Scott. I'm, ju I'm just a bartender. Uh, yeah, moving right along. Um, <laughs> now, for the for the taking of the time, um, you know. This, this is really a tool, and that's the main point I want to get across. It's a business tool like any other. Um, and it's really the last tool that you should bring to the bar. You know, but it is the most visible. You know, if you can do some tricks, you know, you throw things in the air with control, you know, with accuracy, without slowing down, right, all of a sudden, you're going to get noticed. Right? And that's what I want. I want people to know that I'm a person. I'm not just a, a server. I'm not just an order taker. Right, that they can come in and make a connection with me, and that's how we make regulars. Hey, how you doing? My name's Scott. Welcome to Roxy. Right. These kind of things. By the way, for those of you who don't know, Roxy is my home bar in Vancouver. Come out, let me buy a drink. All right. Can I make a sorry? Can Please. I make a quick point? Um, Please. I, I I don't personally do the flipping. Like I never taken a course, never tried, but. At first, I remember seeing it, and I did, and I wasn't too crazy about it. It's neat to see, but then I look at the way. I, for me, when we implement a new procedure or a new thing, there's always an extra step you have to take, and so it does sometimes slow it down. But in the end, the effect is is good for the customer, for us, for the for the business. People come back and they never forget it. You know, it's like you can go down the street to one of the, uh, to one of the, I think, 13 bars on Granville Street, where right near me, and they remember that they were in the Roxy. That guy, remember that bar with the flipper? You know? And that's what they remember. And for me, slow or not, that's a, it's, it's a, it's a, a good time lost. You know what I mean? It, it builds the business up more and brings that in, which for me is one of the steps you consider. Exactly. Is it viable for your business? 
Exactly. You know, so what are the reasons why we want to do this? Okay, it's fun and we have a good time doing it, but that's not the point, right? Why do we want to do this style of bartending? It's entertaining. It's entertaining, <laughs> right? Because, James? People stay in the bar. Because the, 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 if people just, uh, if, uh, they don't have no incentive to, to, to stay anywhere, because a lot of bars, they're all licensed, they all carry alcohol, they all play music. And so if you have a different diversion, that, that, that's something that's out of the ordinary. And people, I, I've, I've had people who've, who've wanted to stay for one drink, and you do, you do little tiny subtle things for them, and right. all of a sudden they're there for three hours. And that's yeah. cool. Exactly. Attract them to your bar, give them reason to come in, right? and you know, convince them to stay a little bit longer. I, I've heard stories from a lot of you guys who told me, well, people have come in for, you know, for one drink, whatever. And you know you've you've made a connection with them and one drink for <laughs> ten years. But give them a reason to stay a little bit longer. And I've heard that you know quite often that especially now with the non smoking thing too, where you're losing your customers at the bar, you know, they usually hang around and have a smoke at the bar or whatever. <clears throat> You give them one drink and then they're gone. Yeah, some Couple places in the world, for those of you guys who don't know, that um, in BC, British Columbia, um, which is the province that we live in in Canada, has just passed a law that there's be no smoking in a public place. So um, it's like that, in, I believe, in California. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's happening. But um, so a case in point of another reason why we've got to give an, you know, be even better, give people reasons to come to our bars. From a management getting point of view, it also uh, leads towards higher profit margin totally. items, like cocktails and shooters are way higher totally. profit margin than selling a butt, right? Totally. So, yeah. We're going to get into that because it's exactly right. If you do this properly in the way that, uh, I guess, our, the way that we philosophize about it, um, then it gets you into selling different products. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. You know, we want us to be able to increase our sales revenue, right? Because that's the bottom line, right? We're there to make money for the bar, right? That's it. You know, fun is great, but, you know, this is a business. And I've seen a lot of people out there who I think are doing it for the wrong reasons. I think that, uh, I really have seen two types of bartenders who get into the style. Um, there's the one type who hopefully will use this as a tool. Right? So they will, number one, they will learn properly. Uh, you know, whether you learn from us or someone else, or, or, uh, but just go slowly. Right? Take it at a time. Bring in you know, one or two tricks a week until you really have them. Like, we're very serious on the control aspect of it. You know, if you don't have a trick you know, 95 to 98%, don't do it at work. Just don't do it. I want control. I want confidence. I want precision. You know, I want you to be able to do it with a personality. Right? Um, if you do that, then you're going to have you know, a good following. You're going to get good positive response from people. Uh, and you're wow, that was really nice. Right? Right? However, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people go out the other way. And they will sort of get really excited. And excitement's great. But they will they go, yeah, that's great. But let, you know, show me the, you know, the double, triple bottle tricks, you know, blindfolded, whatever. Well, no, there's no need for you to do that, especially in the beginning. You know, start out with the basic things, you know, with your limes and your straws, you know, and, and your stainless, you know, some simple glassware or work. I mean, there's so many simple things that you can do. Um, uh, shameless plug here for our videos. Um, but our, our first video, there's 80 moves on there that are totally risk-free. And I, I honestly believe if someone only did those 80 moves, like, you'd be smoking. You'd be on fire. That's the way the smart person does it, right? That's not all the way that everybody does it. Everybody gets very excited and they want to get on to the other stuff. And they forget about the smooth style stuff. I've seen some guys, uh, again, I won't mention any names, but you know, have got amazing hands, like amazing physical dexterity. But they'll standing back there when it's not really that busy. You know, and they'll just be standing and they'll be juggling empty bottles. Well, I mean, on the one hand, I could say, OK, it's somewhat of an attraction. People would look at that. Um, but I would rather that person spend time interacting with the customers. You know, talking to you, maybe, you know, doing a couple of bar bets. Uh, the lost telling a joke or a riddle. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, flipping is great, but it's the last tool that you should use, and you should only use it when you're actually making a drink. All right? So that's, that sort of stuff really kills me. Has anybody had any negative experiences? Like maybe as a customer, you're going in and, and you've seen someone do this kind of stuff. Just what you brought up before is, you know, not, not having a drink in front of you and watching some guy flipping and stuff. But, uh, I mean, that... Yeah, that, that doesn't happen that often, right? You know, yes. from what I've seen, but you know, I mean, in town there's not that many of them. So. Yeah, some places. Uh, I went to a place in uh, in Toronto, and not nowhere near you, but 
Uh, and I'm always like, I like to go into bars when I travel and, and watch bartenders <laughs> and just see what I can learn. Uh, so learn from things that I, I like what they're doing and learn from things that I don't like what they're doing. Um, just as valuable. And I'd heard there was a reputation of a, of a, a, of a guy and a girl you know, who were apparently really good in the area. Went in, actually this was with my team a number of years ago, there was like four of us who walked in. And, um, you know, didn't tell, us, t didn't tell them who we were. He said, uh, you know, we've heard you can sort of flip and do that sort of stuff. You know, pretty vague about it. And uh, I went to the girl first, and she goes, yeah, I, I'll make you a Long Island. I think I could drop a lot of stuff with that. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> right? And, you know, we think she's kidding, right? You're being a funny bartender. Phew, no problem. Great. Well, she makes a Long Island. Uh, it wasn't a mix, so she picked up, uh, she, she made four, four liquors and, and the lemon juice and the Coke. And so out of five bottles, because uh, she had the, the juice in the bottle, um, I think she dropped four of them. Uh, and luckily, there was a really, really thick mat, rubber mat. So nothing broke, but... Uh, that's why it's there. That's, oh, wow, wow. Uh, she probably, in this one, she probably spilled like 11, 12 ounces. Just, and I was like, just going like this. and um, like, like literally, and I won't exaggerate, I was sitting at the bar going... <laughs> I was like, you know, and trying to, you know, to not throw up, basically. <laughs> um, it, it was astounding. And when we finally got the drink, there must have been four ounces, five ounces in there at least, and it, you know, a single job was like, whoa, and of course charged me for that. So how much did that cost the bar? Well, I mean, prices of liquor vary around the world, fine. Um, but first of all, looks, it looks sloppy, right? And I go, I just don't have the respect for that kind of a person. It doesn't look like they know what they're doing. So right away, I have less respect for that bartender, you know, which is not the impression that I want to have, right? Number two, they were getting me wet. <laughs> You know, which is just not a good thing. I mean, you had lemon, lemon juice and, I mean, what had it been, cranberry juice and a white shirt? I mean, you know, all sorts of problems can arise from this. Uh, on top of which, uh, you know, the, the cost of what, of what they were spilling, you know, the bar manager and the owner couldn't have liked that. Um, and what about all the breakage? Well, she didn't happen to break anything because there's a lot of mats, but, you know, she keeps doing that and, and a lot of things are going to get broken. It's just, ugh. just fingers. The only real uh, negative experiences I've ever had are people with just attitudes. Same. That do it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Rare, Can you expand rare. on that, please? Well, I mean, I've seen, uh, as you say, I've seen lots of guys with huge physical dexterity and, and great skills and stuff, but just uh, they're, they're so aware of it. <laughs> and totally. They, they, they feel that it. they're just yeah. the, the, the gods of the bar. Yeah. Right? How, how, does that react, how do you react to that as a customer? Well, that person becomes unapproachable. Totally. Yeah. That's, that's you go okay. in for a drink, but you can't talk to them. You can't. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think that's just that's so unfortunate because it's totally unnecessary. I think there's enough attitude in bartenders. You know, we're supposed to be confident, and that's great. But there's a difference between confidence and arrogance, right? And being approachable is really our our main goal, right? Because we have to have people come up to our bar to be able to do our business. So, if I'm giving out an attitude that you know I'm God's gift to bartending and you know, it's, you know, it's your privilege to be served by me because, wow, I'm this person. Well, you know, I should go home. You know, somebody should smack me first. Uh, you know, I mean. It's not that kind of movie, Scotty. Leave the, not that kind of movie. <laughs> Can we talk about this? <laughs> Adult film. <laughs> Adult film. Real stuff. <laughs> very you know, yeah. uh, we here in this room have, are very proud of doing what we've we do for a living and how far we've come and, yeah. and, and how far bartending and how far as bartenders we've been accepted, you know, done yeah. fairly well for ourselves. And go in and see somebody that's a little cocky and arrogant and yeah. a little embarrassed. The thing as well, I think, is that you, you hope that in the grand scheme of things, they hit your bar before the other bar. Because yeah. you know that if they go to the, the, the arrogant person first, by the time they see you, you do one trick and they're basically, they're leaving a vapor trail as they leave. Yeah, totally. So it's not a, yeah. they're, thinking, they're thinking you're the same person they saw earlier and everybody's like that who's doing this kind of bartending. Exactly. It's all over your wall. And when yeah. I see someone like that who's really cocky and arrogant, the first thing that it really pisses me off because it makes me look bad. Yeah. Because yeah. you try really, you, 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 you try really, yeah, or all of us, exactly. Because you, you try to have it where you, 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 uh, you portray a positive image. Yeah. And for every 10 people who do it well, the one person who does it poorly, that's what they remember. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Uh, unfortunately. It's, uh, it also makes some customers feel uncomfortable. I mean, it, they get dragged into it all of a sudden. They're the reason why the lineup behind them is just grown. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. They're sitting there going, I just ordered this. I didn't tell him to do anything. Exactly. And he's just taking his time. I yeah. think that um, if you incorporate it, you can be a lot more efficient. Um, like, for instance, I work at a heavy martini bar. And I can flip shake a martini 
way faster than it would take me to, you know, yeah. give it three or four of these. Yeah. If I could just, you know, flip it a couple times and crack it, it's done. Yeah. Anything that you can incorporate that makes it more fit, uh, more efficient and faster exactly. to make the drink is better, yeah. right? Totally. And the stuff that, especially the stuff that we teach, you know, is this really style moves, is the fast things. And we're going from here to there, you know, moving around. Instead of just standing flat-footed, right, and, you know, there, uh, I mean, you know, whatever, a little shake. You know, little strainer. There you go. And that took no time at all. How long did that take? You know? Oh, come on! Right? I mean, it's, it's just style. I mean, it's just a little bit of. It's just proactive. It's going to be doing something, not just yeah. amusing yourself. Yeah. You might as well, I don't know, be talking on the phone. Yeah, really good word, and we're going to talk about that later. But, I mean, there's three kinds of people in the world. I mean, there's, there's a proactive person, right? Someone's going to go and make something happen. There's a reactive person who's just going to you know, respond to somebody who comes up to the bar. And there's an inactive person who's just going to, you know, so be back there. And, you know, somebody walks up and, like, you know, we're busy. You know, we're <laughs> having a talk with the, bar, with the other bartender. Well, you know, you're a bartender, and I think that that's, uh, that's a really special thing. I think you're a leader. You're a camp counselor. Really? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I mean, you got to go out and make things happen and introduce people and all these great things. But uh, I think with the extreme stuff, if, if you do it properly, everybody wins. Now, I've always liked the, the expression, well, there's two sides to every story. Okay, there's, you know, what you think is going on and what I think is going on. Well, I think there's a third thing that's really more accurate. It's probably, you know, what's really going on, right? And it's, it's somewhat in, bet in between, right? So I want to look at the big picture, right? I don't want to just look at cocktail and, and judge all performance bartenders on, on that. I don't want to look at the one guy that ha is totally arrogant and standing back there flipping empty bottles, making everybody wait, thinking he's God's gift to bartending. Um, I don't want to judge that. But then and not everybody's like me, right? A lot of people are going to make the judgment on their first impression, right? And it's a lot easier to gain someone's trust than it is to gain it back, right? And that first impression can be very powerful. So if you decide to do this kind of bartending, you know, at any level, Right? And I'm not saying that you have to you know, flip everything you touch all night long. Not at all. Every place is different. Right? Every person is different. Every style is different, uh, depending on the night, on, on the place you're working, on you know, how busy it is, on the style of music, on you know, how busy you are. Um, you know, the people, do they really want it or not? Are they, are they upset or are they, you know, into a party atmosphere? I mean, there are so many variables. But that's what's the beauty about being a bartender, is that we get to make those decisions based upon what input that we're getting. You know, this is not a simple job, you know. At the base, you know, it's, it's, you know, making a drink, right. But if you want to be exceptional, you got to take all these things in consideration, you know, and be everything to everybody. Simple. It's like speaking, a cup, not just one, but a couple different languages. And that's what I equate the, bar, the, the flair bartending with a bit. It just makes the customer more appreciative of your already good intentions yeah. so you come up hey how are you what are you doing tonight blah 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 yeah. can I get you something sure what do you want and then all of a sudden it comes out instead of what can I get that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> do we get that do we get that <laughs> but it just makes it more customer service friendly when you're doing something that astounds them rather than they expect it exactly you know why didn't you make that last time the same way you made it this or you no know, yeah. it was better last time I flipped it better yes yeah. Every place is different. I mean, this is a great case in point. I mean, Dougie's got a very specific personality, and right, and it works really well for, right? You know, well, you sure? <laughs> right, right, and that works really, really well for the place he's in. Now, if you're working in a different place, he's smart enough to alter his attitude and his personality towards that place, right, right, and that's the thing. There's a place uh, in Las Vegas actually called the Beach. Uh, that uh, I was speaking to some guys down there about. And, you know, they're, they're nuts. They're crazy. They do some really wild things that, you know, wouldn't work in, you know, a five-star hotel restaurant, right? But it really works for there. And that's kind of what I, I want to get the point across is that there's, there's very few black and white right or wrong things to do in this industry. It's what works for your bar in your area for your personality. Like, I know they, they pour... Uh, so they, like, they take their shirts off and they pour shooters down their chest. I mean, they're on top of the bar. They're, they're, they're nuts. It's a really wild, crazy nightclub, right? Well, that's not acceptable everywhere. It's not even legal everywhere, <laughs> right? But you know what? It works there, and they're great, you know, and it's, it's a to show. People go away talking about it. And now how many people know about it? Well, that's you know, more than four. <laughs> that's what? That's my favorite nightclub in the world. It's a good place. Yeah. yeah, if you get a chance... Other than the Roxy. <laughs> <laughs> you are so lucky. Go to the beach and
likes extreme yeah. bartending. Yeah. <laughs> right. And there's places out there, but it's really, you got to decide what works for your area, right? And that's, I guess, my main point in this section is that, you know, it's very easy to find out, well, that won't work. Well, great. Well, let's find something that does, right? Because there's so many things that we can do, right? But, you know, start slow, start smooth. And, you know, if you do it properly, every, everybody wins. Getting back to what you were saying before, tying into both those questions of when, when or how should you use it right. and uh, the negatives about it all, I think it's basically with my experience, uh, it's discretionary. You know, you have to use discretion when you're using it. Mm -hmm. For instance, if someone's coming in or whatever like that and they order a beer, it's fine. You're friendly as, as for the customer service end of it all. But then when you throw or, or do something like just a simple little trick, it's like a shake of the hand. It's an icebreaker, you know. Yeah. Someone they yeah. put a smile on their face. They're like, okay, that's yeah. cool. You know, it makes yeah. them feel more at home and yeah. relaxed. Yeah. And the negative days. parts of it all, the, the attitudes when people are coming up, that just contradicts everything about like what you train, what, service. what I've experienced, which is the service and making that person feel welcome. Exactly. To yeah. Welcome to my home. This is my house. Um, people Sasha. feel a lot of anxiety when they walk into a yeah. club. There's a bunch, bunch of people. They feel that everybody's looking at them. You know, the, you see from the inside out, right? right? So when you go up to the bar, you don't want to have anybody waiting in line or you being the cause of anybody looking at you even more, especially in that circumstance. So if you make friends in some sort of a way, whether it be a, a simple straw flip with a smile and goodbye or whatever like that, then that just makes a whole They're heck of a lot of good difference. Feeling. Yeah, they're going to yeah. come back to you because you've now totally. made that connection. Um, somebody I know I, I really respect and look up to is uh, Sasha Pachekovic, and he's one of the guys that, that really motivated me to be you know, an exceptional bartender. Uh, and uh, him and actually Andy, Andrew Macbeth, uh, they were at the Roxy Lounge before I do, and they were the guys that I look up to, and I went, you know, they've they're, they're, they got style, they got class, they're friendly, um, you know, they're, they serve everybody quickly, um, you know, they're, they're even, you know, they're not just serving the pretty girls, or they're being, they're being fair and respectful. Um, and I looked at that and went, wow, you know, that's, that's what I want to be. So um, Sasha had a, a really great line that he's always said, you know, this is my home, this is my living room. I want people to come in and feel like you're in my home. I'm your host, I'm not just a bartender. Welcome to my home. You know, how can we make you happy, right? And just that, that power, that, that confidence, that, you know, hey, welcome. You know, spreading the love, if you will, without being too corny. You know, that is very powerful, right? And, you know, he's made an incredible reputation for himself on that. And his vodka soda will taste better than anyone else's vodka soda because of inside what he's done to the people and yeah. said, Wow, Sasha will make me a drink, and it's great. Yeah. Whereas you go to a bar, you're unsure, you don't know what you're about to get. Exactly. You yeah. know mm -hmm. what you're going to get, and yeah. you, you trust that. Exactly, that's the trust, because now you trust him, right? Because he's made, he's made you feel welcome. All of a sudden, he's not just somebody who's serving a drink. Yeah. You know, he's a friend. You know, hey, welcome. All right. The last great thing in the world that people expect because of the service that you generally see in this industry is a three-dimensional bartender. Yeah. Someone yeah. that can do more than one thing. And Very so, rare. And so yeah. when it happens, it's just, it's exceptional. And, and I used to work with Sasha for, for many years, and uh, I had a hard time serving a lot of people at our bar because they just would not be served by anybody but yeah. him. Yeah, there's a real loyalty involved when you take care of the people. You know, that's really well deserved. I tell a lot of people about Chris because Chris is not a guy who flips a lot of things. A couple things here and there, very, very minor, right? But he's one of the best bartenders that I've ever seen, right? I see a lot of bartenders. Eh, we're talking about you, not to you. Eh, 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 right? Point is, he's got such a, a warm personality you know, that, that he makes everybody feel welcome, that all of a sudden, you're important to him as a customer. You and know? you know what, and I just moved to the city, and when I first went to the Roxy, you totally made me feel welcome. Like, you just, I felt like I, I was a regular there. It was the first time I was there. I had the best time, and I truly oh, contribute that to you. Oh, yeah, you sure you did. Yeah, no, you kissed me, actually. <laughs> now, one point I want to make, if, if you're going to do this, um, I think there's some ways that we can um, make it easier for you to integrate this style of bartending into your bar. Right? Any, any ideas? What are some of Yes. Setting your bar up properly. Exactly. Making it ready so you can walk in there, you know, have things where you can you know, be faster, know where everything is. Exactly. Right? So know where everything is, definitely. Now, for the, specifically for the flipping stuff, um, one thing that I really recommend doing is using juice, you know, flipping your juice. Um, we're really big on against fl about, about spilling alcohol, and really until you're really, really good, there's no real reason to flip alcohol. Um, I think one thing that, that I recommend is that if you put your juice in bottles. Now, a lot of people have juice in the guns, 
right? Or those big plastic storm pours, right? Well, okay, why not save some of your, of your liquor bottles, you know, soak them overnight, take the labels off, put the juice in the bottles. Now, there's some places out there in the world that I know that this is not, you know, completely legal. On the other hand, it's not that big a deal in other places. So you can get away with a lot of things. Um, but a lot of places is totally acceptable. And this really minimizes your risk. It's something that, that I highly recommend you doing. Um, all of a sudden, you've got you know, all your juices to be able to, to play with is much less risk. I mean, what's the difference between a bottle of you know, a juice and a bottle of rye? A lot of money. $40. You know, 30, 40 bucks, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah, it's some dollars, right? You buy an expensive juice, man. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Also, it's slower. I think it's uh, quicker with this with the good speed spouts. It's yeah. quicker than yep. the gun, and it doesn't make the noise, yep. the dishwasher noise. So. Well, there's nothing yeah. worse than having juice coming out of a gun. Yeah, uh, totally. I mean that's kind of juice. You know, yeah. What do you want, cranberry? Or? What what is is it? Also, and all I got it all here, and it all comes out of one gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You just yeah. grab it with your fist and you press all the buttons. Oh. At once. Yeah. Yeah. I push one. That was good. That was good. That was good. Anything, anything that you're gonna do, though. I mean, you're you're having. You know, you're doing something rather than just pressing a button, right? And I think it's, it's just more entertaining to watch, right? Um, Chris mentioned the spouts, right? And there's all sorts of different options on there. Um, what I like using for the, uh, really for, uh, for juice especially, is this, is this straight speed metal pours, right? It comes up very fast, right? And, uh, I don't know, it's just such a, 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 a way of opening up your options. There's so many things to do. Um, also, um, if you have those in your in, uh, in bottles, your juice in bottles, you're able to now suggest what? What do you really want to be selling? Cocktails. Cocktails, exactly. Why do you want to be selling cocktails rather than just a highball? More money, right? You know, your average check goes up a little bit, right? You're making a higher profit margin on. Other than cocktails, though, what else do we want to be making? Juice shooters. Juice shooters, juice shooters. Juice. exactly, juice. right? Juice shooters, right? Now. Shooters are actually a lot of you guys don't know, but it's a Canadian invention, right? Nice. More, yes, yeah, it's kind of nice. More than just like a shot of Jack or, 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 or a shot of shot of tequila, right? Um, adding a number of different liqueurs, right? With juices, you know. Again, shake them up, right? It's great. You know, a lot. We want to play with this. A lot of great tricks you can do. With this totally safe, right? No risk. Also, also, nothing wrong with tequila. Premium <laughs> <laughs> browns, you can charge them huge, and it just takes a couple seconds. Yeah. Especially Absolutely. if you're pouring a lot of them at once. So Absolutely. You know, but with tequila, you can also mix other things with, uh, like, with cranberry juice. Yeah. Is it a cherry bomb? I know it's one name for it. Um, tequila cherry, you know, shaking. It's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit colder. Um, but one thing with these, with juices and with different liqueurs, is you have different tastes, right? Um, I think that there's been really two types of drinks that have been successful historically, drinks or shooters. One is the, the harsh, you know, scotch, martini, uh, something that's pure alcohol, right? Sort of the old school. Bottle of shot glass. Exactly. You know, rye coke and a bud, boy. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, you know, whoosh, right? Then there's the other, hand, other side that, you know, really tastes nice, sort of like the, the lighter drinks, the, you know, foo-foo, girly, right, exactly, right? Right, the lighter ones. Well, do only girls drink those? No, of course not. Right? You know, it gives you different tastes, and I think that opens up a lot of options for you, which is nice. So we really like to get into diff to different colors. I also think that with juice shooters, the value for their money for the customers because it comes in a larger shot glass. Uh, Absolutely. More valuable. Yeah. Absolutely. The difference between a, like a single shot and a double shot is what? A shot. Cheers. Perceived value. I want the big one. I want the big one. <laughs> So noted. Right? I want the big one. I want the, you know, the more value. Well, they're not getting any more liquor, right? But people don't really connect with that. They're like, oh, great. They're going to feel like they're getting more for their money. Right? Brian, did you have a call? Also find out if you, uh, if you try that type of shooter. Yeah. Uh, get them like that one. Well, what else you got? Pick a color, any color. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You get them uh, trying and experimenting different things, and it's like creating a better experience. For yeah. them. And they do always ask for something new. Like they always are yeah. asking you, what, well, what can we get? Well, make me something, because yeah. I hate yeah. deciding what yeah. I'm gonna drink. Yeah. I've had this. I've had this. I've had this. I want something else. But yeah. nobody, nobody walks in, sits in, sits in your section, and walks up to your bar and says, make me something neat. They have to know you first. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. that's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. totally right. Yeah. 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 I get that tons of bottle. I, I, we get that tons. Yeah. But yeah. You know the, what kind of martinis do you have? What kind of fruits do you like? Do you right. want something strong? Do you yeah. want something with right. juice? Do you want 
make me something. What's your favorite fruit? Yeah. I get what taste lot. do you like? What do you eat? Do you like eat apples? Do you like berries? Berries. Cool. Well, there you go. You make right. them a berry martini. But the reason they do that is because berries. of the pr presentation that you're giving. For yeah. example, like going to a bar to you, I know you're going to make me a good drink. I know that you know more drinks than I know. Okay. And that because if you can do all this, yeah. well, then you sure can make me a cocktail that I'm going to like. Yeah. Yeah. They don't understand what their options are, right? So they're coming to us because we're supposed to be, you know, the mixologist. We're supposed to have some knowledge and be able to suggest them and guide them into some, some different tastes, different experiences, right? We're supposed to be the all-knowing bartender, right? Well, offer, offer them that, right? And next, you know, getting to what Jerry was saying, do you want to recap that just briefly? Um, yeah. What point? <laughs> <laughs> well, when, if they're not sure, right? Yeah, you qualify he, them. Yeah, basically, what I like to do is I start by saying, great, um, you know, would you like a, you know, a cocktail, a shooter, a beer, right, right away, because I don't want to wait until, you know, they've made up their mind, right? I'm going to guide them into a certain decision. They're going to say, well, I'm like a cocktail. Great, would you like it sweet, creamy, refreshing, harsh? What kind of taste do you like? Harsh. Harsh. Well, then you've got options, right? Creamy, yeah. The other cool thing about that, too, is... After you've presented it to them, they taste and they like it or dislike it or whatever. They say, "Well, if I want another one of these, what's it called?" I don't know. Yeah. Name it. Yeah. Okay. What do I do if I want another one? Well, you got to come see me. Yeah. You got to come see me. Bar coming back to see you because nice. you made them a special drink and they're exactly. giving it to their friends. And they're like, "Oh, this is my drink." Yeah. Exactly. You know? <laughs> right. But this all comes back to it helps us do more of the of the performance bartending because we're using juices, right? We're getting into tastes and colors, but at the same time we're interacting, right? We're obviously making a connection. I feel that when you offer them a whole wide variety of, uh, of drinks or premiums or whatever like that, you're also showing a lot of professionalism, knowledge of, you know, your drinks or whatever like that. Or like a waitress going up to a table and knowing the specials and all the whole menu and being able to romance it to them or whatever. People like options and they like to, you know, they don't want their, ins their intelligence insulted. So you give them options, they feel, okay, cool. All they right. control. They feel yeah, in control, yeah. and then yeah. they pick it, and it's all a win-win. Yeah. But you have to exactly. give them a real option rather than what kind of beers you have. We have Bud, Coors Light, <laughs> right. Genuine, whatever. Right. These are all really good topics. We're going to go over more. Let's just finish up on the extreme bartending. About, hey, these are all reasons about what's going to make it easier for you to do this kind of bartending. Um, like mats, you know, rubber mats, you know, the safety net. It's always a good thing. Right, certain types of glassware. Uh, actually, I'll give Libby's a really good plug. Uh, Libby's uh, Duratuff line glassware are, are really great. There's these, these type of glass. You know, they're they're durable. They stack really well. Um, you know, I'm not getting paid for this. I like to use them at my best. But there's certain things that you can do to make it easier, right? But always focus on the simple things. You know, the limes and the straws and the garnishes, easy style stuff. Yeah, Don. I just wanted to say, um, I'm not a bartender, I'm a server. Extreme bartending isn't only about flipping stuff, it's, it's about customer service excellence. As a server, it's my job to approach people. It's my job to, to go out there and, and bring them in. As a bartender, people come to you. Right. Um, and it's, it makes my job a heck of a lot easier um, and a lot more fun when my bartenders have great customer service yeah. all the time, exactly. as opposed to having an attitude about it because yeah. their job is just that much easier in right. my house. You know, I think what, what, the reason I got into it originally is because I want to have more fun and I want to make more money. I want to work at the top spots. I wanted to make an effort about, about being exceptional. Um, but also what I found when I started flipping is that I just had more fun. I was more relaxed. I had excitement to come to work. You know? And if you're happy when you come to work, good things happen. You know, really good things happen. Um, any other uh, yeah, questions, comments? Yeah. Just make a point here. Um, a lot of people seem to be, like, in this room, work in the, in the, in the bar like nightclubs and stuff. I'm hearing a lot of this. I personally work in a restaurant with a, a bar attached to it. So a lot of it's families that come in too. And you know, I mean, if you take a glass and you do a little flip and like the kids' reaction, the, the parents are loving you, you know what I mean? Right. You make a yeah, Shirley Temple or John Wayne or something like that. Right. Yeah. No, they, well, I mean, they're not hanging out there boozing. <laughs> Some of them wait an hour and a half, you know what I mean? So if I'm doing something a little special to, yeah. you know what I mean? They come back, they really do, you know? So totally. it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. I think it, it comes down to if it's if your focus is presentation of the drink, the taste of the drink, and the customer, you, you, can't, you can't be wrong, you can't be in the wrong. Right? Right. But I've, I've walked into a lot of bars and seen guys, you know, completely concentrating and so into what they're doing, you yeah. know, juggling stuff and concentrating on that and, like, completely ignoring Totally. Themselves, right? Right. It's just like oh, yeah. setting up a wall right in front of you, right? Yeah. It's like
Yeah, and hopefully like we don't overdo that. Go. Or, no matter what, you got to be approachable. He's constantly doing that new trick. Yeah, you see them or as soon as you say one word, they drop everything. Great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 exactly. All right. One question: Is there any advice? Is there any advice that you would have for someone who's just getting into the style of bartending about what to do, what not to do, or how to present it to the bar manager to let them be able to do it? Yeah. Most of the time, whenever I'm doing anything, anything I've ever done with extreme bartending, most of the 90% of the positive reactions that have, that have come after weren't like, oh, that was the coolest move. It was like, you, like the vibe you lay down is extremely positive. It's happy. And that's what people remember. Nice. And yeah. just remember, you know, just smile, say thank you. And, you know, also, be good to people. They'll be good to you. Remember, you got to do everything. Your, your, your customer service, <laughs> your sales, your everything sort of thing. You, right. You've got to interact with the people. I mean, so don't forget, just because you know, you're flipping. You're not just going to get behind a bar and just. You know, know, know all your drinks. You have to be personable with the people. You have yeah. to get it's It's part of the job. Yeah. It's a big part. Uh, always think of the customer, too. Like, without them, you're nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Looking for a job. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's our privilege. Everything you do has to be for the customer totally. and about the customer. How many choices do they have? They've chosen, I mean, at the Roxy, I mean, keep going back to this, but, um, you know, when I'm in town, I work there, you know, a couple nights a week. And, um, I mean, it's lined up seven nights a week. I mean, it's a great spot. And there's a lot of reasons for that. You know, but I think that mainly when they wait in line for an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours sometimes is not, is not unusual. You know, maybe it's cold or wet or whatever. They get in and the place is packed and then they still have to wait at, at my bar or someone else's bar. You know, well, boy, I better be the best bartender they've ever seen. Yeah. You know, because they deserve it. <laughs> the right? thing is, too, right, um, like minimum wage in, in BC is like, what, seven fifty, seven twenty five, like that? Which is like 10 On a, a martini, a premium martini at our bar so costs seven twenty five. You just waited, you know, two hours to get in line, right. ten minutes in, in line, you get up and you're spending one hour yeah. of your of your work week and you paid your on cover. a drink, on right. two ounces yeah. of alcohol. It better be good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? And you better make them feel welcome, better right? Follow. Tricks are great, but you know what? It's just a tool. It's a you, business you tool. What would you say to someone getting into it or why? Yeah. Do it do it for the fun and the and the energy that you create for yourself. Make it something that you're doing for you, not for them. Right. And don't rely on it. Don't make it your only skill. Don't make yes. it good. the reason you're bartending. Because I wanted to flip bottles, and exactly. it's not good. Exactly. When I go into a place now, I, I, I don't ask. You know, I don't ask if I can do this when I go into a new bar. Um, I just do it. And, and my, you know, my performance and, and, uh, and my attitude, I think, speaks for itself now. And, and nobody's ever asked me to stop doing it. Because I don't do it right. negatively. Right. But also, why? Because how often do you drop? How often do you spill? Drop and I don't spill. You know, in general, sure. You know, occasionally. Everyone makes mistakes, right? We're not saying that doesn't happen. However, you know, someone like Ian has got you know the intelligence to go and be controlled. So whatever he does, I mean, he's smooth, and it's he brings. It's a part of his bartending. It's not, hey, look at me, I'm really cool, yeah. right? It's like you know when you ever learn to dance or anything. You've seen those like those those feet prints on the one, two, three. Well, you know, you get to a point where it's just smooth. You know, you're, you're smooth, right? It comes part of you. If you take the time to actually to, to get the basics first and uh, get to the point where you're good and, and, you know, you can speak to people while you're doing it and, exactly. and all that stuff that goes exactly. along with it and you're like a full rounded bartender, a three-dimensional bartender, you don't have to ask anymore. You just walk in and do it and your yeah. manager will love you for it. Yeah. Learn it as a science. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> what's, the, what's the best reaction from a particular trick? What's the, the main trick that you get the best reaction from? Lemon or lime. End of the drink. Same here. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, would you, would you like a lime with that? Yes. Yeah, squeeze it. You know, rim it. Oh. Yeah. There you go. Like that one little trick makes me more reactions. Like, wow, that lime thing. I mean, it's <laughs> it's unbelievable. Out of the one where you off the wall. Pretend to throw it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's what I you get better reactions out of that. I watch you. And I see you throw it, and then I see you do it, and they'll go, and he's already put it in the glass. They look down, and those people watched that line go through the air, and it never did. And they're looking, oh, it's way up. Somewhere. I know the same was. Because our bar's going to be raised at the end. Right. I would say, with the advice question you asked is, uh, discretion and it runs into everything that everybody's been saying is you know you know what what the customer wants you know you can throw in a move 
uh, and make it nonchalant or whatever like that. It's a move and it's all smooth and it's all great like that. No time wasted. They're waiting in line for hours or whatever like that and they don't have to wait for you to make a drink or whatever. Use discretion. You can judge by basically when a person comes to your bar, their facial expression. You know, if they're mad about something, they've yeah. got some sort of a frown on, you want to help them out, make them quick, quick joke. Maybe the next time they come up, when they're a little bit more relaxed, do another big whatever. Right. Discre discretion is, uh, right. I would say, in my experience, my right. advice. One more point I want to make that if you are planning on going to you know, present it to your bar manager and say, I want to do this kind of stuff. I've got these videos. I've taken this course. I've, I've heard of this style of bartending. Um, I guess there's two ways you can go about it. And uh, really, wanna, we want to increase your odds at being able to succeed. So I think go about the smart way. I and mean, that is ask for a few minutes of, of his or her time. You know, can I, I'd like to uh, talk to you about a couple things tomorrow. Can I have five or ten minutes every time? You know, make it a business thing, right? Right away, you are all of a sudden different than the rest of the people. You're not bringing it up at the end of the night at cash out when there's 10 people in the room and crazy and tired and laughing, whatever. You know, oh, hey, I'd, I'd like to do this kind of bartending. Well, you're not going to get a re good response there, right? You want to go one-on-one. -on -one. You want to bring, uh, you know, your manual if you have it or, or the videos or brochure information that you got off the net, whatever. Something to be able to present. Hell, use, use us, if you will. You know, there's this company that talks about this. Show, show them this video. Uh, you know, make them understand that it's a business tool. Right? This is what I want to do. This is how I want to do it. Right? And this is why I want to do it. I'm not doing it just because I want to be a, a Yahoo. I want to do better business. All right? So if you're going to do that, you're going to have a lot more success. Be professional. You know, be respectful. Understand what it is that your manager wants from you. All right? There's a, a saying uh, from Sun Tzu, The Art of War, uh, ancient Chinese uh, uh, philosopher, uh, warrior. He wrote a book. It's on strategy. Right? And he, had a, he had a quote that said, if you know your enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know your enemy and you know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. Well, understand your, what your manager is and your enemy. Understand your customer. You're the enemy. You are enemy. <laughs> right? Get him! right? Because basically, exactly. It's the same, another saying. If I want to get what I want, which is to be able to do the style of bartending to make everybody win, I have to make sure that you understand. So I have to know you to know what you want. Well, what does a manager want? They want to be professional. They want to have higher sales. They want to have more people come into their bar. They want to have people walking out going, wow, that guy was great. You know, that's Scott guy. You know, he's my friend. You know, I made a connection with him. I'm going to come back to that bar. I'm going to go out and I'm going to tell everybody that I know that I had an exceptional time here. All right? So understand your manager. Understand what your customer wants. Right? Your customer wants to feel special. Right? Give them a little extra. And that's all it is. You know, a little flip here. You're just doing something extra. A little bit here and there. You know. Sir? Just because I work with you, and I work with other extreme bartenders, and uh, uh, I can say that undoubtedly when we're busy, you keep up with the customers. Yeah. And right. there's no one waits at our bar as a compared to another bar because we're, we happen to be doing some exactly. extreme bartending. Right. My point, last one I want to make is that no matter, then thank you, um, no matter how, how busy you are, you know, you've got to work it into your flow. You know, and the fact that I've, I've never seen a bar that from opening minute to, to closing minute, you were doing nothing but head down pour drinks. You know, it just doesn't happen. You have spots in between, some more than others. But you know what? It's how you use that time. Right? And you can fit it in properly, but don't overdo it. You know, it's a tool. It's a business tool. I don't know. But again, main, main thing, you know, just have fun. Have fun at what you're doing. I don't know. Spread the love. Spread the love. Have a little bit of fun. All right. Thanks very much for coming today, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. What would you say to a bar manager or owner who is a little skeptical of this style of bartending? Actually, I was in that exact situation when I first took my uh, $450 fine art bartending course through uh, actually a really good buddy of mine now. Um, you know, I'd brought up Scott and you know my uncle and this this part of the industry down there, and he was really beyond skeptic. He'd been bartending for you know this long, and he had done it his way, and you know had really great results. But you know, I just you know I was so interested in it, and you know it would seem so great. You know, every time I looked into it, it's just like it was just you know, excelling customer service and well, um, 
during the course, I asked if I could bring in Scott's videos because I got them as a gift through my uncle. And uh, we watched some with some of the, the people that were in my course too. And then uh, the, my instructor came up to me and actually asked to take them home. And I said, yeah, sure, man. You give them, a, give them a checkout and tell me what you think. And before the course ended, it was only like two and a half weeks long. Before it actually ended, he, uh, he had me contacting Scott to say, this is amazing stuff. And I was, you know, I was so close-minded about it before, and you know, he just had never really done his research or anything, or you know, given the time of day. I would, you know, I'd probably give him video one of the bar sport series because it's totally 80 moves, totally risk-free. Uh, no managers need not worry. And after explaining to him, I'd, I'd give him the video to take home and say, you know, see for yourself the kind of things I want to do. And you know, anybody with half a half a brain that sees that could realize that you know, it's only only for good. And there's nothing. There's no risk. Virtually risk-free. Um, I'd sit him down uh, privately in the office, talk to him basically, uh, show him exactly like the videos, are, for example, uh, how it can be done, how it can be done effectively while making more money for the, for the company or for the bar, and uh, just basically asking for a trial period. Let him show exactly what it's all about. I think it's bad on them as a manager to not hire or not participate because of their feelings and not knowing what actually is going on. Most of the people that do not participate in the in the, the whole style of bartending that Bar Smart and, and the Roxy are putting forward don't really understand it, are afraid of it, and um, and just leery of it. They just have one opinion and they don't want to participate because of, of their own beliefs. And that just makes us stronger. So either they can help themselves or they can help me, and that's, that's fine. They are the people that make the money here. They are the people, the reason that people come back. They see the show, whether they flip or not. It's the customer service side, which is what this whole thing is about. The, the flipping is secondary, has always been said. It is the customer service you give first, and the show you put on after is exceptional. Oh my God, they're that great and they do this as well. That's what I would say to a bar manager that's skeptical about it. Mm, I try and speak through my actions. I try and show them numbers at the end of the night. And uh, you know, I have a lot of fun behind a bar and that speaks for itself. And, and I'm very inclusive and I try and make sure everyone else is having a lot of fun. And uh, honestly, I just try not to take myself too seriously. Um, you know, I think we, we've seen it in these videos before is that uh, if, if, if I make fun of myself, if, I have a, if I'm clowning around myself, um, you know, if people are laughing and having fun, I win. You know, it doesn't matter whether they're laughing with me, at me, it doesn't matter. And, uh, you know, I just try and use it as a tool and I try and integrate it and, and, and have some fun with it. And there's lots of stuff that we do that has, has nothing to do with absolutely going ballistic with a bottle. Right. It's just smooth and, and, uh, and inclusive. So that's what I try and do. And, and I've, you know, doing that, I've never run into a problem. Yeah, yeah just, no, you know, if I'm not spilling your profit and if, uh, if I'm not breaking a ton of stuff um, and I'm smooth and I can serve as much as the next guy, nobody's ever had a problem with me doing that. Yeah, so I've walked into lots of bars that have just asked me to cover a shift or two and, and I have no problems. Your uh, best bar joke or riddle? <laughs> Who needs a riddle when you look like this? <laughs> <laughs> and we're done. Move it right on. <laughs> That pretty much wraps it up. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. Be sure to check out our website. We've got lots of new stuff going up all the time. And if you like what we do, tell your friends about us. We'd really appreciate it. Also, make sure you check out the ads at the end of the video. These are some great companies and they can really help you if you give them a chance. So call them and find out for yourself. I'd like to leave you with three of my favorite quotes and a few thoughts. Abraham Lincoln said, I don't think much about a man who doesn't know more tomorrow than he did today. Michael Jordan said, I can accept failure. Everybody fails sometimes, but I can't accept not trying. And Wayne Gretzky said, I miss 100% of the shots that I don't take. So bottom line, care enough about what you do to think about how to do it better. And be proactive. Go out there and make something happen in your life. But above all, enjoy your life, because you never know how long you've got. Who wants to play golf?
Barsmart now brings you a sensational six-week program. You'll learn everything you need to know about serving drinks with style. With step-by-step -step and slow motion instruction, you'll learn easily, quickly and properly, so you won't spool the profits or break everything in sight. This is a business and great bartenders do more than just take orders. So create excitement and increase your sales revenue with the Extreme Bartending Video Training Series. Our three videos with over 240 moves in all is a must for bartenders everywhere. No matter what level of bartender you are now, if you follow our program you'll increase your odds for success because you'll make an impact on every customer you ever serve. Think about it, if you don't entertain your customers, someone else will. Because in this highly competitive industry, you can't just expect high sales and big tips, you've got to earn them. So you can have a lot of fun with it. You can make more money for your bar, make more money for yourself. And if you do it properly, it's a win-win-win situation for everybody. gives a little spark to people's lives. I think the world's starving for entertainment. Cocktail the movie. That was great. It was a really good beginning. But, uh, that was 1988. Hopefully by now we've taken it further. Look out!